Yeah, guys, uh, still hammering on the injuries to the ulna nerve. Today, we'll be talking about the ulna paradox. Uh, the ulna paradox is basically um, you comparing the outcomes uh, from the injury of the ulna nerve at the wrist and the, and the injury of the ulna nerve at the elbow, okay? Ulna nerve paradox, you know that basically you have two places where the ulna nerve can be injured, which is at the wrist and the elbow, okay? So ulna nerve paradox is actually... Uh, the outcomes when the ulna nerve is injured at the wrist, okay? Maybe uh, as it is injured at the wrist, you're feeling that the outcome will be more, like the effects will be more. But in the opposite way, when the ulna nerve is injured at the, at the wrist, the outcome is lesser, okay? So that's what the ulna nerve paradox is all about, okay? So the question is, what is the ulna nerve paradox? We we'll see from here, the picture, the, the picture is quite not clear though, but you guys could still learn, okay? You see the carpal tunnel um, um, injury, and this is the injury at the elbow, and this is the injury at the wrist, okay? So we'll be coming back here to actually refer to this image, okay? This is another picture. So the ulnar nerve also innervates the ulnar half of the flexor digitorum profundus, okay? So if the ulnar nerve lesion occurs at the elbow, the flexor digitorum profundus is affected. As a result, the flexion of the interphalangeal joint is weakened because you know that the flexor digitorum profundus is the chief flexor of the arm, okay, so, uh, of the hands. So if it is affected, the flexion will be weakened, okay? So as a result, the flexion of the interphalangeal joint is weakened, which reduces the claw-like appearance of the hand. Of course, there will be claw-like appearance of the hand, but it will be reduced because the chief flexor Okay, the muscle that would have made this clawing worse is affected. Okay, so it is called ulnar nerve paradox because one would normally expect a more proximal, okay, damage to the ulnar nerve to cause more damage. Okay, but in the other way around, there's reduced damage. Okay, I don't really like this English down here. Okay, that's why I'm putting it in a student English for you. Okay, so just uh, a summary again. So the ulnar nerve can be damaged at the elbow and can also be damaged at the wrist. Okay. So when you damage it at the elbow, it is it will affect the flexor digitorum profundus, which is the chief flexor of your phalanges. Okay. So now, if the chief flexor of your phalanges is affected, that means there will be reduced clawing of the hand. Okay. There will be reduced clawing of the hand because the muscle that would have made the clawing worse is affected. Okay, that's the ulnar nerve paradox. Right. So see you guys in the next tutorial, and bye.